Hi, it's Mo and welcome back to the property vlog. This week we're on site at Bramdean in Exeter, the conversion of the former Bramdean school into 23 apartments and two detached houses. Work is really steaming along on site, which is great. And we're already getting some inquiries for off-plan sales, which is fantastic. Before we head over to Tom and a couple of special guests in today's video, just a quick note to say, if you are interested in investing in opportunities like this, give me a shout. My details will be in the description of the video. Minimum investments are usually £50,000 and depending on whether you are a sophisticated or unsophisticated investor in the eyes of the FCA uh, will depend on the type of investment opportunities that we can offer, whether that's sort of a fixed interest rate investment or whether that's a longer term profit share deal. So without further ado, let's head over to Tom and a couple of special guests for a site update and a worrying discovery in the lower ground floor of the schoolhouse. Okay, so I'm Tom Fenton from KHP. I am here at the Brandine site. It's been quite a while since I've done a video previously, so I wanted to show you around the site, show you what's changed. We've had a contractor that start here and a lot has happened in the last month or so. So I have just entered site. I'm gonna to speak to Kurt from SML, who is the main contractor, and we'll find out what's happened in the last few weeks. Hi, I'm Kurt from SML Contracts. I've been working for uh, SML Contracts for nearly 10 years now. We've been here for over a, uh, a year on this project. Find us, obviously we've got the Brandon, the Brandon School, which is gonna become part of 23 luxury apartments and two new detached houses um, off Homefield Road in Hemetry and Exeter. So as soon as you come into the entrance of the site, you've got the welfare block and the site office and the toilet facilities on the right hand side. Um, we've got a parking area out the back where we park the vehicles, fuel storage at the back as well. Um, at SML, uh, health and safety is paramount, um, so it's part of the signing in and uh, induction process each morning. The operators will come out to the site office, they'll sign themselves in and sign themselves at the end of the day, so if there is an incident on site, we're aware who it isn't on site. Also, on your initial day on site, any operators who haven't been site inducted, we'll go through one of the management team, either myself, Dan or Steve, we'll go through the site inductions. So our site induction presentation is here, we've got paper formats, we've also got a site induction laptop as well. Obviously all the lads will sign, they actually say they received the, the site induction. Also part of the site induction process, everyone's got to fill out our risk assessments. So we've got SML risk assessments here that have all been signed and dated. And then we've also got our subcontractor rounds as well at the back there, John Grimes, for the wax testing and the excavations. Um, other elements on here as well, we have got toolbox torch. They have occurred on this project, nothing, no serious matters, no near misses, but just stuff that we need to keep in house and make sure it um, doesn't really care. So the toolbox torch have been carried out and dated here. Um, also part of the minimum requirement on any of our construction sites, obviously you can see our, if you want to call it our health and safety board, obviously we've got the health and safety poster, we've got the F10 of the project, um, site logistics plan, just so anyone who comes in for the site induction they're aware of where the muster points are, the fire things to service points are. Um, we've also got fire alarm sounders as well, so that's capture the sites. So if there is a, an incident of a fire, we can press the alarms and everyone should come and find out the buildings and uh, congregate to the fire muster point. We've also got our posters on the wall as well for the fire muster point, first aiders who are trained first aiders on site, where the first aid kits will be, situated downstairs in the welfare area and in the site office as well. So behind us, where we've got our ground workers uh, excavating for the foundations, um, is going to be the new detached house directly off Homefield Road. Um, it's going to be a three-storey uh, detached house. Uh, as you can see, uh, excavations are underway, the foundations are underway, and our bricklayers will soon be starting to build up to DPC level, um, and then we'll be backfilling for slab in the coming days and weeks. My name's Richard, Richard Jones Limited. We do all groundwork, civil excavations. 
for SML. We are doing the foundations and fitness for uh, house number 35 on the new block of Bramdean School. Right, so I am stood inside the music house. This is uh, going to be nine apartments and I'll show you what's happened here since SML started a few weeks ago. So we're now stood in the, uh, the music house, which is going to become um, a nine part building uh, over three floors. Uh, over the past few weeks, um, we demolished the mezzanine floors. Um, we started to open up windows and door openings. Um, we started to clear the lift shaft, uh, which is going to be the heart of all three floors. Um, excavations have um, been uh, carried out and the concrete has been poured for the steel frame columns that we're building to. We've got brick layers starting to open, uh, close off um, existing structural openings which are no longer required. Um, Cropping has been carried out um, throughout as well. So as you can see here, the block works commence to the lift shaft, which is great to access that top floor and a nice unique feature of this building. So we've got the lift shaft here and then through this side, we'll have new entrance and a new staircase which comes in here. So yeah, big building. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be wonderful. So this is the boundary wall and you can see here the steels that did frame the old homeward block. It's now been, well, nearly all demolished. Um, and we're keeping these steels in place just to maintain the stability of that boundary wall. There was a massive swimming pool uh, trench there before, um, which we started to backfill, um, and we're kind of using this as a storage area at the minute um, for a disposal of storages until, until we get the whack test results back. Um, and this is going to form part of the rear garden to uh, the detached house 39, which will be between uh, the school and the music uh, buildings. Here on the west elevation, of the schoolhouse we are looking at a light well which has been dug out by sml um, and in the process obviously you've exposed the uh, the lower parts of the the external wall of the schoolhouse um, and when working on a building of this age you come across all sorts of issues so that's what i wanted to speak to kurt about the hardest had we've had to come across so far is determining the lower ground floor which become the basement uh, finished floor levels existing to propose to new. Um, between the three previous terraced houses, obviously we've got different floor levels throughout, um, and obviously the slab details. We've got areas where we're excavating for new slabs, and we've got areas where we're leaving new slabs in and we're going over the top of cellar tech and screen. So trying to get these levels correct is quite difficult. So obviously what we've had to carry out is uh, set points from the uh, upper ground floor, which is classed as the ground floor. Uh, floor doors are being raised, so we've had to take dating levels from the proposed height, back and down. We've restricted on ceiling heights. We've made it work, but yeah, that's probably the biggest hurdle. Um, there have been other hurdles on this as well, so when we've exposed for the extension of the rear here, um, the potential underpinning. There is obviously stone build there as well, it's not just mud earth, um, but there's going to be potential some structural work that we need to carry out just to ensure the external um, structure of the building um, is stable um, before we uh, push on with the internal fit out. Down in the lower ground floor in the schoolhouse here, and you can see the floor joists to the upper ground floor above are still here, but the floorboards above have been removed. That's because this whole floor level is gonna be raised up. And the reason for that is to gain some additional head height down in the basement. So down here on this floor here, currently there's not a great floor to ceiling height. So uh, it, it, in order to make these apartments down here more desirable, we're increasing that ceiling height. So when we were excavating the existing uh, floor build up on the lower ground floor, um, fortunately there was no uh, instances or uh, falls through the, uh, the well. Um, so as you can see to my left here, one of our um, operatives was breaking out the, the base found a massive slate, popped through a section of the slate and they felt it seemed like a hollow section. So obviously they've pulled, called us down and the management team down here to have a look at it. And then we discovered that there was a near on four metre deep uh, well. So straight away obviously we had to do some health and safety with down tools, make the area safe. But it's one of those unforeseen, uh, but yeah, four metre deep well in the low ground floor of the schoolhouse. The initial plan was the down tools, make the area safe, pass it on to the client team, obviously the structure engineer from Brody Forbes got involved. 
They've issued a design now to backfill the well. Um, there'll be an overflow drain just in case any of the water levels do increase in the coming years and we don't have any flooding issues of the uh, lower ground floor apartment. So last week we had the uh, foundation poured for the uh, east elevation retaining walls um, and our bricklayers this morning have made a quick start um, on setting out the uh, block work for the retaining wall. Um, as you can see, it's quite a sized retaining wall. It's not a straightforward straight wall either. There's a lots of uh, 90 degree turns and different uh, floor levels, which in relation to the finished floor level on the internal uh, lower ground floor, um, and also there potentially is going to be a step detail between a apartment to the other, again, due to the finished floor level details. We are stood at the front of the schoolhouse on the upper ground floor, and we will go through the existing front door and I'll speak to Kurt about what we're doing on these floors. So as you can see we've got a lot of barriers up because there's quite a lot of the existing floorboards and floor joists that have already been removed ready for reuse. We're able to raise the uh, upper ground floor level to suit the first tread on the staircase obviously to gain the access and the height room for the lower ground floor. So yeah a lot of work's gone into this and um, we've discovered quite a lot of the old timber in the framework which is quite nice to see but yeah we're at the rip out stage is complete now ready for our preparation on repairs to the brickwork and any uh, timber uh, treatment works we've got to carry out so we're just going to go from the upper ground floor to the first floor of the schoolhouse this is an existing staircase which we will be keeping and refurbing and it will form part of one of the communal staircases so this is the first floor. You can see that SML has removed all of the existing lath and plaster off the walls. We've exposed all the external wall brickwork. We can see all the internal wall timber stud work. And that gives us a really good starting point to commence the actual building works from the inside. On the first floor of the schoolhouse, I just wanted to point out at this stage where we've stripped out um, all the internal walls and, and all the lath and plaster from the external walls, it exposes all the brickwork and also all of the repairs that are required. So there's lots of examples where we've got to infill uh, where old timbers used to be, like uh, this one, for example. So that'll be infilled with new brickwork. And there's also lots of areas where the brickwork will need repointing or infilling uh, in order to um, structurally stabilise the wall. Now the light strip out and the demolition phase is near on complete. We've got steel framework on order, fabrication drawings have been sent for approval. Once they get this to the site, we'll start from the lower ground floor because we want to have certain columns, we'll take the beams and channels above to build up, build up, build up. So it'll be steel framework from the basement or from the lower ground floor to the upper ground floor to the first one to the second floor. Some of the steel beams in the second floor roof space are quite tricky, so it's going to be a, an element of where we're going to be uh, removing uh, the existing roof to get exist uh, to get new steel trusses in. Um, then we've got steel purlings to go into tie everything together. So that's going to be a tricky element, but something that we can handle. Once the steel frame is back in, it will be removal of the existing roof covering, new felt batten, lead flash ins, and then recover. And then I suppose it'd be once we're dry, it'd be windows, external windows to be replaced, the new, just so we're securing the water ingress of the building. And then we'll probably start from the from the second floor work our way down to start fitting out the apartment. So you could say over the next coming weeks, um, we'll be very busy. And then I'll suggest them potentially a month, a month and a half time is when we'll look to start um, the internal stud work partitioning um, and external uh, jip liner framework to uh, give the rooms a better, a better finish. So a massive thanks to Tom, our development manager in KHP, for the update. Thanks also to Kurt from SML for his detailed knowledge of uh, the site. And also thanks to Richard from Richard Jones Limited. If you want to discuss investing in projects like this, give me a shout. My details will be in the description below. And remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and share with anyone you think might get value from it. So a massive thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.